cat mom. This is gonna be more of a serious video where I'm gonna go into some video games that has darker themes to them. The story of these games are touching in on like death, misery, pain and suffering. And I also asked on Discord what are some of the saddest games that you have ever played. And we're gonna go over your answers at the end of this video. I definitely got a lot of answers to that. Also, I wanna like have this discussion down below in the comment section. But I made a list of the most saddest, the darkest and disturbing topics I've come across in a video game. And a lot of them are PlayStation games. But I'm gonna start with one that is on the Nintendo Switch. And I think this one is pretty obvious to have on such a list. That is Graveyard Keeper. And it came out in 2018. 2018 being the year that a lot of these games came out. After I made the list I saw that had like a common theme and I've been talking about this game several times on my channel before uh, but it is worth mentioning yet again when it has been some time since last time I talked about it because it really stands out and it is truly unique. Never have I ever come across a game where I am the keeper of graveyards and dissecting and doing autopsies on bodies. As per burial traditions, you are a mortician and you gotta make a living doing this type of job. Now the somber music, the atmosphere of the village and the world. This is essentially an isekai story sort of because it starts out with, in the story, with you being a normal dude dying and going to this alternate universe where you are now a graveyard keeper. It is such an experience to play this game if it doesn't freak you out that you are doing this job and burying the bodies. But I am enjoying this game, I have fond memories of it, but it is so unique and it is actually one of the most sincere and sometimes brutal dark themed games I've ever played. It is often on sale so I hope you want to pick that one up. Uh, it is really really good. Like the game is actually good also. It's a crafting game, okay? Nicely wrapped up into a lot of freaky stuff, but it is a life sim crafting game essentially. The next game. If you have been around on my channel for some years, you know that I have been talking about actually all of these games before. But this is a, you know, a list video with the darkest themes and reflecting back on how special these games were when it comes to the themes and topics that they explored. Now, Crystar, this is a game that is just straight out sad and disturbing, not to mention disturbing. Now you have accidentally killed your own sister with all of the grief and guilt that comes with that. You're making a deal with two demons and down in purgatory you are killing souls just to relieve yourselves of your own guilt and in order to save your own sister you are causing harm to other people's souls. In purgatory this is really messed up stuff actually a lot of pain and suffering and they're not afraid of going into like the bizarre area of dark sad disturbing topics now this is a dungeon crawler hack and slash game with a lot of cute graphics and pretty colors definitely worth uh, checking out Crystar uh, for that regard the game is very repetitive but um, it deserves to be on this list Now another dark themed game and this one I've been thinking about regularly. <laughs> Think about that regularly over the years and that is Oninaki. It's a game that not many people are talking about and it is a game that flew a lot of people by back in 2018 when it was released. Now I made a review, I made a review of all of this and in Oninaki you are playing as a watcher which is helping lost souls passing over to the afterlife in order to get reincarnated. So you're kind of breaking their reality and going into this alternate reality 
lot of the times to talk with the souls that has passed and this is where the strong stories are the stories behind where every single soul that is stuck in the in-between they have some sort of messed up regrets about their own lives and hence they cannot move forward a lot of these stories are so sad it's like get your tissues it's gonna be cry worthy stuff very sincere and this one is gonna really immerse you into the world and the stories that they tell you. Oninaki is on the other hand also a fun game to play, like actual good game, and it is essentially a hack and slash game, action RPG game where you are traversing uh, a lot of different maps, doing a lot of side quests, reading a lot of good story stuff, and collecting these spirit fighters, and you can switch out which one of them you want to use, and they all have unique abilities in combat, and this game is actually really satisfying to play. This one, Oninaki, maybe that is the next game that you can decide to pick up, at least put it on your wish list if this one passed you by in 2018 when it was released. No way, it was released in 2019. This one needs to be on your wish list because it is such a game. Something dark to play now in Halloween times, am I right? Now I have one other game that is really, really dark. And this one is going more into slasher horror territory, where there's a lot of blood and brutal killings, if that is more like the serious theme that you're going for. <laughs> so it is a visual novel hybrid, and I understand if you don't like visual novels, but hear me out. In this game, you're playing this girl that is sent to the school and everything is weird. And there's a big, 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 big reveal at the end of the game, which tells you all about why everything is weird. Okay, the ending is so good in this game. It's a Compile Heart and ID Factory game from 2020, and I'm talking about Death and Request 2. Now the first one is pretty messed up as well, but number two is where the horror and the actual, like, disgusting stuff is at. It's really disgusting stuff, disturbing stuff. That is actually the best visual novel hybrid game that I've ever played. It's also a JRPG game with combat and with traversing off dungeons and figuring things out. It's all of that as well, but it's a lot of story in this game. That is why I want to call it like a visual novel hybrid. And I even have the poster of this game framed up in my guest room to remind me of how this game had an impact on me. Now, if you don't feel like playing anything disturbing this Halloween, or this fall in general, you could always play Luigi's Mansion 2, the remake that was released. Now, I played that on the 3DS, and I popped in the remake on the Switch, and I was like, hmm, I've already played this. So for me, there was nothing new, because I already remembered everything from the 3DS version. Hold on. Nintendo bags all I sent over the game and some stuff. Look at that. A lot of details. Thank you, Bagsala. Also a little keychain with a dog on it. And Luigi's Mansion 2, it's a good game. Do I need to say more? No. Uh, I don't like that it is divided into episodes. My favorite Luigi's Mansion is still the first one on the GameCube, because I've replayed that like 10 times. Loved it so much. But the remake of Luigi's Mansion 2 is definitely worth checking out, if you didn't play it already. Now for me, if I picked up this game on my own, it would not feel like it was worth it, because I already played the 3DS version of it. And it feels so much like Luigi's Mansion 2 for 3DS. I'm just giving you a heads up. But the game is worth playing through at least once. Okay guys, over to the Discord answers. Uh, okay, so join the Discord guys. I'm gonna... I'm, go I'm gonna... A really good dark one is Bramble the Mountain King. Children of Morta is a nice pick up and play game. You've probably already played it though. Darkest Dungeon as well. No, I haven't. I don't think I've played neither of them. I think I played a demo of one of them. I would say a game called Rhyme. It didn't run well on the Switch at launch, but they fixed it. Also the Ori games. I haven't played Rhyme. I looked up some gameplay and I was like, this doesn't look like it's dark themed. And someone said, well, it actually is. 
but we're not gonna spoil what it is. Made me intrigued. Okay, um, not a Switch exclusive, pretty much on all platforms. The Brothers, no spoilers, but this game hits you in the feels late. Very good. I think The Park on Switch, that's pretty freaking dark. I would say Death's Gambit Afterlife, Blasphemous, Blasphemous 2 and The Last Faith, all the same style of game, 2D Souls-like Metroidvania. Emio, The Smiling Man, which is a visual novel that just came out. Ender Lilies and the upcoming Ender Magnolia, Demo and Gris. Now this is an interesting topic and I want to say Happy Halloween. Like living in northern Norway, the sky is getting black day in and day out according to how we are placed on the globe and the earth isn't flat it is actually around and we are placed on the top which means like if you see an animation of this stuff we are so far up north that it is actually pitch black all the time pretty soon and uh, that is also disturbing okay so that was all of the dark themed games that i can think of that i think you should play if you want to if you dare to let me put it that way. And if it's too dark for you, you can always go Luigi's Mansion. Which is more like fun dark. Make sure you check out my links down below for all of the stuff that I like. Like I am drinking Gamer Sups and I'm recommending Emotional Damage as your starter tub. Also, you can get the samples with my link down below. I'm a Gamer Sups ambassador right now, which means I get a kickback if you order with my link and that would be fun. I hope you enjoy it because I've been drinking Gamer Sups for years now. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, I hope you want to hit like on it and subscribe if you are new and join the Discord. <laughs> Leave a comment down below and thank you so much for watching and I will see you later.